Hello everyone, I'm Greg Weaver. Welcome to The Audio Analyst. I've enjoyed presenting my overwhelmingly positive experiences with Fozzie Audio and their absurdly affordable and overachieving products. Commencing with my three episode examination of the Fozzie Audio Balanced V3 Monoblock Amplifiers. In episodes 199, 206, and 209, I progressively start with the examination of the stock models, moving on to the significant improvements accomplished by replacing their stock Texas Instruments NE5532D semiconductor dual op amps with a pair of the Sparkos Labs SS3602 discrete devices. Next came episode 245, recounting my time listening to their stock $89 Q6 DAC. Once again, after finding the stock unit to be something above average, I went on to uncover the remarkable sonics that were unleashed after swapping out its single stock Texas Instruments LME 49720NA semiconductor with one of the Sparkos Labs SS3602 discrete packages. Today we are going to take a dive into the $200 Fozzie Audio ZP3 balanced preamplifier, yet another well-built and overachieving device as shipped right from the box. It ships with a narrow, thin plastic remote that is built for use across several of their products, which explains why not all of the buttons apply to controlling the ZP3. I personally find the ZP3 design to be both easy on the eye and remarkably functional. Its connectivity options include two sets of single-ended RCA inputs and a third XLR input, as well as one set each of XLR and single-ended RCA output jacks on its rear panel. That rear panel also includes a pair of 12-volt trigger jacks, a single RCA subwoofer output jack, and its rocker power switch and IEC C5 AC cord socket. Starting from the left of its front panel, it has a multifunction push button switch that manages power on and off with a long press and toggles through all three inputs, RCA1, RCA2, and XLR, each with its own corresponding LED indicator with a short press. Next up is the IR remote receiver window, followed by three small round black plastic knobs for balance, bass, and treble, then a larger copperish colored volume knob. But the real surprise is to be found on its bottom panel, just under the very leftmost front corner, where we find two embedded sliding switches. One has two positions labeled bypass and off. The second has three positions labeled 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, 80 hertz to 20 kilohertz, and 120 hertz. To 20 kilohertz. The first allows you to completely circumvent the ZP1's tone controls. When set to bypass on, the tone controls are completely removed from the signal path. When set to bypass off, the signal is routed through the tone control circuits, allowing you to adjust bass and treble as you prefer. Now, as you may have guessed, I preferred listening in the bypass mode. The other switch is the line stage's high pass filter selector. This switch allows you to manage the filtering of low frequency information away from the ZP3's main audio outputs, offering two different preset flex points. When set to the first position, 20 Hz to 20 kHz, no cutoff is applied and the full audio spectrum is allowed to pass to the main audio outputs. The other two positions, both the 80 Hz to 20 kHz and the 120 Hz to 20 kHz, are used in conjunction with a subwoofer or subwoofers. In either of those positions, the frequencies below either the 80 or 120 Hz crossover point, corresponding to whichever switch is selected, are filtered out of the main amplifier outputs and are instead directed to that subwoofer output jack on the rear panel. 
At first glance, the implementation of such a frequency management option should be seen as an extraordinary feature to be found on a line stage at this price point. You see, by removing the lowest frequencies from the primary audio outputs for the amplifiers driving your stereo speakers, and instead directing those lowest frequencies to the dedicated subwoofer output via the sub-out jack, your loudspeakers no longer even attempt to play any frequencies below their effective low frequency response range. When a woofer tries to reproduce frequencies below its design limit, it can only generate a form of infrasonic or harmonic distortion, which not only can lead to poor sound quality, but may actually lead to physical driver damage. Implementing this option with the addition of a subwoofer, or in my case, a pair of them, eliminates any mechanically induced driver distortions that are created when the woofer attempts to play frequencies that are beneath its capable frequency response. An effort that is otherwise wasteful and does nothing but congest and corrupt the purity, speed, and definition of the frequencies within its effective operational range. The result is that the speakers will not only produce clearer, more dynamic and pitch-defined bass, but they will also contribute to a smoother mid-range and more extended, refined upper frequency response. My reason for being somewhat underwhelmed with this option as presented by the ZP3 is based only on the choices I see as unreasonably and ineffectually high crossover points. Most audio engineers would define the upper limit for the sub-bass frequency region to top out at about 40 to 50 hertz. To me, the 80 to 120 hertz bandwidth would be considered as encroaching into the low and mid-bass range, not the sub-bass region. Given that most modest monitors can typically play down into the mid-40 hertz region, and that the upper effective frequency range of most subwoofers would be about 50 hertz, both the ranges offered here seem to be set too high. I would prefer to see the high-pass filter switch offer frequency ranges set to 40 hertz to 20 kilohertz and 60 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Regardless of my quibbling here, it is an incredibly smart and advanced feature to offer, especially at such a modest price point. Another issue I have with the Fozzy Audio ZP3 is that its volume knob on the front uses a microprocessor controlled rotary encoder that does not have any synchronization to the remote's signal. As such, while the remote control allows you to change the volume electronically, it doesn't physically turn the knob to show you where the volume is currently set. As such, if you use the remote to change volume, you cannot rely on the volume knob's physical position to indicate its actual volume level setting. Right from the box, I installed the stock ZP3 in my second space system. My listening evaluations were primarily sourced from Rune to stream files from my NAS or Cobuzz using my WIM Pro Plus, driving the upgraded Fozzy Audio Q6 DAC from its coaxial output. My upgraded Fozzy Audio V3 amplifiers powered the Acora MRB1 monitors, and the ZP3's sub output, using a Y adapter, sent its signal on to my pair of absurdly affordable powered subwoofers, each with their own amplification, gain, and crossover frequency adjustment. So, how does it sound? Relatively speaking, the stock ZP3 preamp delivers an engaging and convincingly good performance, offering remarkably quiet, noise-free performance, allowing it to provide a, an impressive degree of clarity and detail, expressed with surprisingly refined resolution and transparency to the source. It was remarkably well-balanced tonally, with good sound staging and layering, presenting an ease of flow and an expressive dynamism that was surprisingly convincing. Overall, its spatial presentation is quite faithful 
especially left to right, if a little shallow front to back, and less specific in describing vertical sizing and toward the rear corners of the soundstage. Images are well represented with good location and sizing cues. And while I found its presentation to lean a bit to the drier and reserved side, I had to admit to being very impressed with its overall general fidelity and surprising degree of articulation. Throw in all its features, its solid build quality and judicious pricing, and this preamp represents a level of performance that screams over accomplishment and remarkable value. What had become clear with this ridiculously affordable, well-built, feature-laden line stage in play was that it can deliver a level of performance that is meaningfully more than merely competent. In fact, it competes with and in some ways surpasses the performance of and offers more effective features than many other preamps that sell for several times its price. But after something like six weeks or so of listening to the stock unit, giving the strikingly positive results I'd enjoyed after upgrading both the Mono V3 amplifiers and the Q6 DAC, I had to know if substituting the Sparkos Labs SS3602 discrete op amps with their proven track record of performance in place of the stock LME 49720NA semiconductor device, which does measure very well, by the way, could bring about any significant advances in its sonic performance. Now, to be perfectly clear here, I cannot recommend that beginners try to do the op-amp swamp on their own, unless you have some solid bench experience. Disassembly and upgrading the ZP3 is well beyond a beginner level project like the Q6 DAC, and it is considerably more challenging than even the intermediate skills needed to successfully upgrade the V3 mono amps. I suggest that if you want to explore the upgrade path with the ZP3 that you seek the efforts of a local technician or service center to do the work for you. But I had to dive into this one, given what my experiences upgrading the V3s and Q6 had delivered. To access the dip-socketed TI LME 49720NA semiconductor op amps, I had to remove the cosmetic side panel covers and then unscrew and remove those side panels. Next came the removal of the front panel knobs and their threaded shaft nuts, followed by the removal of the rear panel inputs, outputs, and AC connection. Finally, after removing a number of screws to release the standoffs holding the main board in place, I was able to slide it out of the chassis far enough to access the dip sockets. Pulling the stock TI semiconductor op amps, and subsequently installing the pair of Sparkos Labs discrete op amps took a matter of seconds. Now, at this point, I want to acknowledge that Andrew Sparks, the engineer and owner of the Colorado-based Sparkos Labs, has been instrumental in supporting my efforts here on the channel and has graciously provided the SS3602 devices used in both the Q6 and this ZP3 upgrade. Once the new Sparkos Labs dual discrete devices were installed, it was time to reassemble the ZP3's chassis and give it a listen. From the moment I fired it up, its enhanced level of performance completely surpassed my expectations, and it only managed to get slightly better over the first 20 or so odd hours of play. While I can't say that I noticed any particular improvement in areas like resolution or transparency, there were also no setbacks to observe in those attributes either. But the gains made in the assortment of the more colorful, dynamic, and spatial characteristics, qualities that really help breathe life into the music, like the overall tonal richness, low frequency pitch definition, instrumental bloom and body, soundstage layering, the reconstruction of a more corporal, complete, and authentic sense of the space and air of the acoustic environment were downright transformative.
bass performance had taken a serious uptick and was clearer, tighter, and portrayed with more definition, conveying more authority and body. Dynamic expression inquired new range, with both a more authentic sense of scaling and more refined microdynamic nuance. Tone color was more vibrant, richer, and was displaying more replete textures. And the remarkable enhancements in the way it presented the space of a recording, its soundstage width and depth, and instrumental layering, and image shapes, sizes, and locations were simply astonishing. I cannot tell you how surprised and pleased I was to uncover the more than competent performance the stock Fozzy Audio ZP3 brings to the game, making it an excellent choice to anchor most any modest or reasonably priced two-channel installation. It provides a level of sonic performance and a feature set that establishes both a surprisingly high bar and represents excellent value. And should you choose to roll it out with the superb Sparkos Labs discrete devices, you are in for an almost magical experience, one that allows your modest system to take an unprecedented leap forward. For the additional modest investment, you are permitted to revel in so many sought-after sonic attributes that you would normally only be able to experience with a much more accomplished and expensive line stage. In my case, the modded ZP3 so clearly outperformed, and therefore replaced, my second space's previous referent line stage, an exceptionally performing machine with its outboard linear power supply, a combination that had originally retailed for $1,250, or nearly three and a half times as much as the ZP3 with the Sparkos op amps. The addition of the upgraded ZP3 has taken my second space system considerably closer to the engaging and enveloping world-class performance I routinely enjoy from my reference music system here. As touched on with my earlier examinations of the Fozzy Audio V3 amplifiers and the Q6 DAC, the ZP3 exemplifies a superb level of accomplishment in overall design, build quality, elevated sonic performance, and in value. One that simply didn't exist, that could not have been accomplished just as recently as a half decade ago. As such, the ZP3 joins the growing inventory of other Fozzy Audio products that have earned my full endorsement. As always, thank you for watching today. Further information on supporting the channel and my efforts may be found in today's description section or at my companion website, theaudioanalyst.com. Please stay safe and keep the music playing. Till next time, cheers.